Hi there, it's Vivi Cameron here. Welcome to another video. Today I will be using new products just released at the Simon Says Stamp Shop. They are celebrating Stamp Temper, and this will be a month dedicated to stamping with promotions and collaborations with several brands to bring us the most beautiful craft supplies. I also want to invite you to participate in a blog hub giveaway live in my blog right now. The winner will be chosen during this weekend and it will be announced in the Simon Says Stamp blog next Tuesday. So check out the link in the video description. It's called Blog Hub Giveaway. Okay, today I will be using Picture Book French Bulldog Die, which is this tiny one here. This stamp set called Amazing Message with 25 individual stamps, some big sentiments that you can mix and match with any other image and this texture embossing plate called Cora. I really like this embossing plate, and in the previous release, they sent me this one here, which is called Circle Doddles, and look at this, it's super thin. So when you are used to use those super chunky embossing folders, you say, oh, what I can do with this? But actually, it produces a very nice and delicate embossed pattern. I also add shimmer, to these cards and I watercolor the little die cuts to create this kind of compositions. So in this video, that's what I want to share with you, how I did this. The first thing I want to show you is how I emboss the paper using the embossing plate. Some die cutting machines comes with an embossing plate and an embossing mat. If you don't have it, you can buy these embossing mats anywhere. You can also find them in the links in the video description. So I'm going to be using the Tangerine die cutting machine by Tonic Studios and I just simply place the embossing plate facing down on the paper, making sure that the paper is between the embossing mat and the embossing plate. And I just run this to the machine and look at the back of the paper and look at the front of the paper. This is a perfect impression. These embossing mats are great to emboss paper using dies or stencils and I have a video to show 7 ways to emboss paper using stencils and the link to that video is also in the video description. Today I'm going to show you how to do this with two embossing machines so no worries, it's not the end of the world if you don't have the tangerine. I'm also going to show you how to do this with the big shot but for now I want to show you how I add color to this embossed paper. I'm using here Nubo Mousse black hash and I blended a little bit with water but just a little bit of water and when I was doing this I noticed that if I move my hand in circles like I'm doing there I'm going to get a patch of color and I'm not going to be able to see that embossed image like there as well so the best way I found to add color to this embossed paper is moving my hand from side to side very light-handed like so, to be able to reveal that embossed image. So I finished this and I add more ink and more ink here and there, and I forgot and I got a little bit impatient and I move my hand in circles. So I get a patch of color here and there, but it doesn't matter, it's fine. And then I'm going to use this dye by Honeybee Stamps just to create a nice stitched edge and to cut and to die cut this panel. I also want to show you that you can emboss the paper and then use a die to cut it. And your embossed image is going to be just fine. So this is the card I finished using that panel. I made six cards using the same tools. In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips to understand how I made them all. So I'm just going to die cut this panel using that die and now I'm going to emboss this paper. To do that, I'm going to do exactly the same I did before. I'm going to place this embossing plate facing down or facing uh, the right side of the paper and I'm going to be using a big shot. All I have to do is to set the machine like if I was going to use wafer dies or thin list dies. And I'm going to run this through the machine twice. So yes, you can get that impression and despite you get all those marks of the embossing plate in the back of the cardstock, 
the front of the panel is perfectly embossed. So you can also use your Stampin' Up! Big Shot, Kutlevog, or any other machine. You might need to add a little bit of paper or some layers of cardstock if your embossing plates are not making a lot of pressure on that paper. Now I'm going to use this die. This die is good to cut fabric, felt, shrink plastic, or any other material. But I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to be cutting Bristol paper. And listen, people, I'm not kidding. Bristol paper is the best paper I have ever used to use with water-based markers after watercolor paper. But the difference is that this paper is smooth, the inks blend nicely and effortless as we like. So I highly recommend to use this paper. Another thing is I can get all the little pieces I need to build my bulltop in one go. And I also could use the negative space created by the die as a window to put the little dog peeking through that window or to create inlaid compositions. You can make a lot of fun projects with that. Today I want to focus in adding color and character to the die cuts. Okay, so I'm going to grab a piece of black castle so you can see better what I'm doing. And I'm going to be using Nubo brush script pens. I have here brown in my hand, yellow and pink. I'm going to apply the marker directly on the Bristol paper. And then I'm going to blend and soft the colors using a Nubo Aqua brush. Just like that. It's super easy and I'm going to put a little bit of music so you can focus in the coloring. So as you see, watercolor this die cuts is incredible easy, and I'm going to assemble the image on a circular die cut, and this measures three inches, just in case you want to know. And here I'm using a Nubo glue pen. You can use any glue you have as well. I decided that I want to add dimension to the dog's note. Then I'm going to grab a blank piece and I'm going to glue it in place. And then I'm going to color the little nose in black to paste it in place, like so. Don't worry if you get a stain there because I'm going to paste on top the other part, the one that I just colored with pink. And I complete the ears by gluing down these parts here. And once I have all my pieces together, and I see how they are looking. I like to add some accents. So what I'm doing here is tracing some lines also to create like a, an effect that this is hairs or fur. And with the water brush, I soften all again, just like that. And I try to blend the colors here and there as well. And as I accidentally went out of the image, what I'm doing here is I'm going to pass the brush. This brush is almost clean. To make sure that I don't have any ink in that brush, I just squeeze that tip of the brush with my other hand, like so. I make sure that there is no ink on the brush. So now I'm going to use a heat tool to dry the ink. And once it's dry, I'm going to apply some little white dots here and there. And this is a finishing touch that is good to apply on any kind of image you are watercoloring. It really adds interest. And as watercolor is very forgiving, you can also come back, add a little bit more of color, whatever you want to add, or you can also lift the color with a baby wipe, like so, just to add lights and more details. I'm also going to add this product on the eyes of the dog. This is from Dove Craft. It's called 3D Enamel Effects. I found that you cannot get it in some places in America. So you can also use a Nubo Drops or Enamel Dots. I link similar products in the video description as well. 
And because I cannot leave this dog alone, I'm also going to use this pen. It's a micro fine tip just to add a couple of lines and dots here and there. It's not a big deal, but all these little details really enrich your project. Now it's time to do some stamping and to make another project in my blog post, I use this stamp set as I show in the beginning of the video, which is perfect to use with these ties. As you see in this card here, and also in this little tag here, I just water color the letters to make really bright projects. But as you know me, I like to show you different options. And I'm going to make a Christmas card also using the same tools and I'm going to add some others. So I'm going to start by applying this Nuvo Mousse in burnish bronze color to the embossed panel. And I'm going to speed the camera here because I already show you how to do this slowly and how not to do it when using this blending tool. And despite that I should not move my hand in circles when I'm using this Nuvo Mousse to apply color to this panel, I still did it. So I'm going to embrace that imperfection and I just keep going. And to add that Christmassy spirit, I'm going to use a couple of images from Swell Christmas Stamp Set by Simon Says Stamp. These two beautiful bells and a couple of these, I don't know how to say that in English, but kind of leaves. I'm going to stamp them in red and I'm going to add colors to the images using Nubo Brush script pens again. And I'm also going to apply Gold Nuvo Mousse. I'm going to fussy cut them and it's very late at night here. And I can see the reflection of that Nuvo Mousse here. I'm trying to show you that, look at that. It's just beautiful. So once I cut this by hand, I like to use a black pencil like that so I kind of finish the edges of those images and with an ultra fine tip pen I try to trace some of the lines that cannot be seen because I apply the Nuvo Gold Mousse. Now I'm going to use white ink to stamp a banner on black cardstock. And I'm using here one of the stamps from Advent Sentiments Stamp Set by Simon Says Stamp. I'm also stamping with white ink and I like to stamp several times until I get that sharp sentiment. So I cut it and I noticed that this piece might be a little bit shorter for what I want to. So I went and stamped another. And when I did that, the camera wasn't filming. So I did the same. So now I have this long piece of cardstock that I can just wrap around that central piece like so. And then I give shape to that banner like this. I also use scissors to trim the ends of that banner like so. Once this is done, I'm going to see how it looks on that image and I'm ready to stamp the sentiment, but I'm going to use the Team Holds platform to make sure that I stamp that properly. And I'm also going to be using sticky tongs to add a little bit of dimension to that central piece. So I'm going to glue all together and I'm going to add a couple of embellishments. And once I glue everything down, I grab a piece of cardstock that coordinates with all the colors I'm using for this composition. I trim the edges and I just glue that down on a white card base. This is a C6 card, so it measures 10 and a half centimeters by 15 centimeters. And I also like to add some sparkles, so I'm going to be using this sequence by Knit and Tangle. And something I want to tell you is that you can add as many details as you want to these die cuts, or you can keep it very simple. For example, I took 
about one minute to add color to these dye coats. And all I did was just adding one single wash of color and the image is still nice. You can see that better when I put this image together and I also like to watercolor sentiments like this one, for example. And all I do is stamp the sentiments with a black ink. In this case, I'm using Simon Says Stamp Black Ink. And then I add washes of color. I also like to blend colors, for example, using a yellow with a blue. So I get a green color. And I also like to use glitter pens to add that shimmer on the images. So it doesn't matter how many times I do this, I always do exactly the same. If I want to blend the inks, I keep the paper a little bit wet. And if I want to add another layer of color just to create contrast, I just dry the ink first with a heat tool or I just leave it dry naturally. So now I'm going to paste this banner that I just cut. And I'm going to put together this little French bulldog. <laughs> Another thing I like to do when I'm stamping is twisting my stamps a little bit so they can coordinate a little bit more with another shapes like this cloud here. So it's very easy to do even if you are using a clear block and not a misty. And another thing is I like to place my stamps or my inky stamps on a clear bag like so and then I keep stamping without having to clean the stamp over and over. But this is done when you are using the Misty or the Team Holes platform. Sometimes when you are using these platforms, you need to place the stamps in different areas of the card and you need to clean and clean the stamp over and over. If you don't do that uh, and you place the stamp in an area of the card you want to stamp the image and it's not perfectly clean, you will spoil the card. So to avoid that, always use a clear bag or a piece of acetate and the problem is solved. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel, visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration, and do not forget that there is a giveaway going on just now. I also have a Facebook group you can join to share ideas and creativity. I'm in Pinterest, Instagram, and all the links are in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.